Welcome to the third episode of A Little Bit Unglamorous. I'm your host, Erica Renee. We have another sunset episode if you're watching the visual. And so we're kind of racing against a sunset today. So in usual fashion, we'll get right into it. So this week's weekly recap, it is officially May. I cannot believe it. It's my birthday month. I'm so excited. I feel like your birthday month is supposed to be the best month out of the year, hands down. And it's so weird because April was so gloomy and rainy. April showers bring May flowers, right? Um, But the weather has been a lot nicer lately, hence me being outside right now. It is about 7 o'clock. It's nice and brisk. I kind of have my little white robe set on. I kind of feel like a fancy housewife. I need a glass of wine or something. I have my red lipstick and (laughs) I'm feeling nice and comfy, cozy, ready to do this podcast. Um, Something I was really excited about this last week was um, the Sephora sale. So I celebrated my birthday a little early by treating myself to some makeup that I wanted from Sephora. And while I was at it, I just went to Ulta as well, even though they were not (laughs) having a sale there. But I do this thing where throughout the year I will look at things that I want or if I'm watching a makeup video or if I see somebody rave about a product, I'll add it to my favorites or I'll add it to my cart but I won't buy it in that moment because I can't justify buying it. But then the problem is my, I wait till my cart gets larger and then I pull the trigger on a bunch of stuff. So (laughs) I try to wait until this for sale where I can get a discount. And this year the discount wasn't that great for me because unfortunately I am so pained to say that I am no longer VIB Rouge. So (laughs) in fact, I don't think I'm anything. I think I'm just like, I don't even have a membership. (laughs) I don't get flash shipping. I barely got a discount. I think I got 10% this year. Rouge typically gets 20 and a two day flash shipping, which I painfully miss now that I don't have. I think it took me about a week to get my products, but I'm excited about this lipstick I'm wearing today. I'll back up so you can see it really quick. It is a beautiful red, like deep blue red liquid lip by Pat McGrath. It is in shade Elson 4 if you're a lipstick fanatic like I am. Some fun trivia, this lip was actually worn by Taylor Swift in her Bejeweled music video recently. I'm fairly certain she probably wears it on tour as well. And it almost hurts me to say that it's worth every penny. You know that I love a good deal. You know I love saving me a few dollars. And I'm really impressed by drugstore makeup lately. They have truly stepped up their game. But... I don't know, you guys, this lipstick is worth every penny. And I hate to say, sometimes paying a little bit more is worth it. So maybe I need to rock a bright lip in every single podcast episode because I'm really feeling it. I used to, circa 2016, 2015, I used to wear a red lip or a bright, bold lip every single day to the office. And during quarantine, it kind of... I wouldn't say completely diminished because I still got up every day and I'm one of those people, even though I work from home, I get up every day and I'll do my makeup and I'll get dressed and get ready because I'm really a strong believer. You dress the part, it makes you feel more motivated. And for me, a good day starts with getting ready. So if I don't get ready, it's kind of like a sign that either I'm not feeling my either I'm not feeling my best (laughs) or the day is not going to be a good one so of course the second I sit down my phone decides to go on low battery so maybe we're just gonna chance (laughs) it we'll see I might have to plug in in a bit but so moving on I wanted to give a recap of my week so First and foremost, Cinco de Mayo was on Friday, which to be honest, I completely forgot about, but how perfect was it to have it on a Friday? 
Now, I didn't venture off into anywhere too chaotic with big crowds or anything like that, but I thought to myself, Cinco de Mayo, I, at least I was just talking the day before about how I really wanted to make some margaritas. So I felt like it was an excuse for me to go during my lunch break and buy all the ingredients. And there is this restaurant in San Diego that I love. Um, I've been to, it's like quite a fancy one, but it's over by the harbor. It's called Costera. If you're from San Diego, you've probably heard of it. It is so beautiful it's got the whole view of downtown and i've been to a wedding there one of my good friends got married there i've been to many birthdays there i think i've even had a birthday there they have these iconic coconut margaritas they are so dang good but they are pricey they're the price of a nice upcharged margarita in san diego but it's like this creamy blended coconut margarita that's not too sweet so refreshing and I've always wanted to learn how to make them so I went during my lunch break and I got the ingredients for this margarita and I spent way longer than I care to admit searching for cream of coconut which by the way according to all the recipes online is not the same as coconut cream apparently it's a little bit sweeter um, but it's weird it came in like little mayonnaise like squeezy tube thing (laughs) but so I went I spent my whole lunch break searching for these margarita ingredients surprised my boyfriend when he got home made us these margaritas and they didn't quite turn out the way that I imagined them to be um I wouldn't call them bad but I guess if immediate my immediate reaction is they're not amazing then I don't think they were that good but (laughs) So that was kind of a flop, but my sweet boyfriend told me they're delicious anyway, even though I knew he was lying. (laughs) But it wasn't a complete loss because I ended up getting some margarita mix and we ended up making regular margaritas that were amazing. So it wasn't a total loss. What else? I really just had the most relaxing weekend. I ate and ate and ate. My boyfriend, the chef, made us so many amazing meals. He made us homemade French dips with the rolls completely done from scratch. And we had some beer can chicken and just tons of margaritas all weekend. So it was a really good weekend. And the weather, like I said, has been so nice at dusk where we could just light a fire and sit outside and it's not too cold. Um really the most relaxing weekend that you could ask for so i'm still gearing up for my week it's monday today as i'm filming this and (laughs) one other thing i have in my notes this is so random but (laughs) i have to mention it because it's in my notes uh last week while i was out on my lunch break i was eating at chipotle and everybody knows the hack where if you order a burrito bowl and get a side tortilla you get more food right well i i usually like the burrito bowls more in general but so i ordered a side tortilla thinking it would be free and they charged me 50 cents is that not obscene (laughs) like i was appalled by it i texted at least two people asking did you know that they charge for tortillas now anyway so i wanted to start out this podcast After my weekly recap, of course, I wanted to give you a little midweek motivation because I felt like I have kind of needed a little motivation lately. I don't know. I've just been in this weird funk and I'm I'm starting to feel like I'm lifting out of it because like I said, it's my birth month. It's got to be the best month ever. So earlier I I was kind of peeved because of something somebody said to me and I think a lot of times people say things without realizing the impact they're going to have on others not always intending to hurt the other person's feelings but here I got it all in my feelings and without going into too much detail I'm here to tell you that only you can write your own story you have the ability to change it at any time and I know I've touched on this in my first podcast but it's something that's so so important to me 
do not let anybody tell you you are too blank for anything. You are too old for something. You're too young for something. Um, you're not qualified enough for something because it's never too late to create the life of your dreams and the people who get what they want go for it and they don't have imposter syndrome. A lot of times imposter syndrome will hold you back. And this is really interesting because have you ever had a manager that you feel like is underqualified for their job or they're getting paid so much more than you are and you think to yourself, how did they get this job? It's all marketing yourself. It's all having confidence in yourself. So I guarantee you, if you don't go for it, somebody else will. And the worst they can tell you is no. So why not? And that's what I tell myself all the time is when I feel like, oh, no, I couldn't do that or I'm too afraid to do that. And then I just push myself to do it anyway. A lot of times I'm thanking myself later thinking, wow, here I was afraid to do something that I thought that I wasn't good enough or qualified enough and here I am doing the damn thing making the money or having the result that I wanted so my message to you is it's never too late to start it doesn't have to be perfect take this podcast for example I spent so much time trying to make it perfect and then I thought to myself I'm spending all this time planning and I just need to do it. I just need to start and figure it out from there because the best gift you can give yourself is to believe in yourself and to have that consistency. And while you might have friends or family there cheering you on, only you can make that decision for yourself and motivate yourself and show up for yourself and you will have yourself to think later. You should always be your biggest fan and show up for yourself first. There's no timeline on life. There's no age that you're supposed to get married at. There's no age that you're supposed to have kids by or own a home by or travel the world by. You can do all those things or none of those things on your schedule, your schedule alone. And having done or not done any of those things is not an indicator of how successful you are or happy you are because I will be the first to tell you, people love to give unsolicited advice and the people who love to give it the most are the ones who have no idea what they are talking about and oftentimes are not even happy where they're at in their own lives. So take outside advice with a grain of salt and don't ever measure yourself to somebody else because everyone's on their own journey in this world and in the end as long as you're happy you're the true winner so there's no competition and I have a few examples of what I'm talking about so we all have heard of zoom thanks to 2020 and the lockdown and everyone pretty much started working from home and we relied a lot more on technology and the creator of zoom eric yan he founded zoom at the age of 41 he's now a billionaire in the post-covid world now that Zoom is a part of our everyday work lifestyle. Vera Wang is a fashion industry icon. She designs wedding dresses and they are known for being timeless and elegant. And Vera Wang is kind of the standard of wedding dress, I would say. She designed her first dress at age 40 and that really put her on the map in the fashion industry. Betty White, one of America's most loved actresses, she didn't become a Hollywood icon until she joined the cast of the Mary Tyler Moore Show at age 51 in 1973. And the last one I have written down is the writer of The Wizard of Oz. His name is L. Frank Baum. And he first failed as an actor, and then he failed as a salesman, a chicken breeder, and then he decided to become a writer, finally. And he wrote The Wizard of Oz, which we all know and love now. And at the time, he even kept a book of all of his failed ventures, all of his failed projects he tried to do before writing, and he called it a record of failure. So in conclusion... <laughs> You shouldn't be afraid to fail. You shouldn't let that deter you from starting. 
because a lot of time a failure is really just a starting point for something new. Sometimes life's biggest letdowns or things you wouldn't expect are going to happen to you are the opportunity to start something new and better. And a lot of times I'm redirected in life and I'm thinking in the moment, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And then I look back thinking to myself, wow, I am so lucky that happened to me and pushed me in this direction and I am so much happier and better off for it. So yes, sometimes you have to very publicly fail and let me tell you that I guarantee you the people who are taking the time to laugh or judge and they're sitting around spectating your life they are in no way shape or form doing (laughs) better than you anyone who's doing better than you does not have the time to focus on what you are doing and to judge it people's opinions are always subjective everyone's heard of the quote you can be the juiciest peach in the world and there will always be somebody who hates peaches And another example I have is Shakira. And I heard the story a really long time ago, and I thought it was fascinating. Shakira was actually declined to be in her grade school choir. Her choir teacher at the time told her her voice was ugly. And that discouraged her for many years from singing at all. And... (laughs) Like, thinking about that now, it's not unbelievable. I know, like, Shakira is not everybody's favorite singer, but the, th- the reason why she's so famous is because she has such a unique, special quality to her voice that, that sells. And I remember when I was in high school, I was also in high school choir. And at that time, I remember my choir teacher commended people who had voices that blended in well and harmonized well with others. And I always thought to myself, that's the least interesting part of singing. I mean, of course, when you're singing with a group of people, the whole point is to sound good as a whole. But when you're a standalone singer, what people are drawn into is the unique qualities of your voice. So I just wanted to have a little midweek pick me up for you guys. I felt like I needed one. So moving on to something a little more upbeat, we're going to get into pop culture. And I have some... (laughs) good stuff written down for you this week it really just pulled together last minute and i feel like i have a ton of things to expand on (laughs) so we are gonna start out with the met gala 2023 i don't always follow the met gala but lately i feel like it's become more fascinating because every year they have an outrageous outlandish theme this year's theme was not really too outlandish or crazy because they dedicated it to a late fashion designer But the first thing I want to know is Kim Kardashian showed up on the red carpet and she completely looked phenomenal. She was wearing this pearl dress, which was reminiscent of this Playboy shoot that she did in Keeping Up the Kardashians, one of the really early episodes she shot for Playboy. And I think it's kind of funny because I remember in that episode, she was very very upset that they were going to make her look too nude she wanted to make make sure she looked covered up and tasteful and she was upset because in the long run it was way too much skin that she wanted to show even though hello like she was posing for playboy um they thought they were gonna like photo she thought they were gonna photoshop on stuff onto her body (laughs) But so she wore this iconic just it was basically just pearls in the photo shoot. And that's where the iconic quote of Kris Jenner came from when she was saying, you're doing great, sweetie. It was during that photo shoot. Kim and Pete Davidson also, I guess, met on the red carpet the first time since they've been dating. Apparently, there's no bad blood between them because it's reported that Pete Davidson refuses to do any jokes about Kim Kardashian on SNL which is really respectable background looks so pretty right now I cannot get over it I hope I catch this for what you can see of the sunset and hopefully it doesn't get too dark because we have about 25 more minutes to go so hopefully it doesn't get too dark on me for those of you that are watching the visual version of this podcast and can we just talk about how when Kim was first married to Kanye And I don't don't know if anybody remembers this. He was invited to the Met Gala and no one wanted her there. 
so much so i remember her being pregnant on the red carpet and he he was standing next to her she was actually photoshopped out of the pictures <laughs> and that's how much they did not I, they did not want her there back in the day reality tv was very much shunned by anna wintour and you were not elite or worthy of being there so no one who was on reality tv was invited to this special event i feel like you really got to give it to kim though for that because she has really run with her opportunities people always rag on kim because she's famous for being famous and how she got her start but you really got to give it to her for running with the opportunities that she created for herself and yes i say created for herself because that sex tape was planned you cannot convince me otherwise but it worked in her favor because she is literally a billionaire now off of this empire her and her mom managed to market themselves and create out of basically nothing <laughs> i mean granted she did grow up w more well off than the most of us i would say but props her props her do she's a billionaire now she managed to be so business savvy and work her butt off pun intended <laughs> to become a billionaire and not only that she passed the california baby bar which i don't know about you but i have not passed the california baby bar and california is one of the hardest states to pass the bar in so credit where credit's due another thing that i thought was funny so both kylie and kendall were also at the met gala and they, kendall towered over both kylie and kim she was wearing these platform boots and she's already outrageously tall she must have been over six foot standing next to them and i think kim is probably five two and kylie's not that much taller but i thought it was funny because after the met gala there are parties that all the celebs go to and kylie jenner got rejected from a met gala after party where kendall and bad bunny were partying at already inside so kylie was at the door and she was not allowed in which i thought was pretty funny another thing about the met gala people were going crazy over was there was a i guess apparently a cockroach that was wandering around the red carpet and the internet went insane over this cockroach that walked the met gal <laughs> so looping back to the theme this year's theme wasn't too outrageous it was dedicated to a late designer who has since passed theme this year was called in honor of carl to commemorate the work of carl langerfeld um, he passed away in 2019. He was a high-end fashion designer. And I thought one of the best costumes of the night was Doja Cat. We love Doja Cat. She always takes things so literal and tries to be outrageous on purpose, which I personally love about her. She was always interesting. But Doja Cat literally dressed up as a cat. And the... <laughs> I have some hilarious dogs over here that really want in sorry about that we are back <laughs> so doja cat dressed up as carl's cat who reportedly is thought to be worth over 240 million pounds when he passed away and this cat ended up going to um, one of his assistants who's now the cat's handler i believe so apparently this designer wrote his cat into his will in 2015 and it's reported that the cat was supposed to receive about 1.3 million pounds when he passed apparently has not been seen yet by the handler but it's all hilarious one and the same and what made it even better when doja cat was being interviewed on the runway when people would ask her questions she would only reply by saying meow that's it Paris Hilton also attended the Met Gala for the first time ever this year and that's hot like I said reality tv stars were not allowed to go to this event for the longest time but i love paris hilton personally i loved her surprise performance with miley cyrus and dolly parton during their new year's eve special i love it i love her singing career i know she's not the greatest singer but she's got some bops and you gotta respect her hustle something else in pop news was ed sheeran was recently in trial for a plagiarism 
accusation. He was accused of taking pieces of the Marvin Gaye song, Let's Get It On, in his song, Thinking Out Loud, which if you've heard both the songs, they sound absolutely nothing alike. So I don't even know where that came from. But apparently he was forced to miss his grandmother's funeral to be at this plagiarism trial that only lasted two weeks before they decided to rule in his favor so good for him that's really odd but they even had him pull out his guitar in court and sing the song so that's interesting and speaking of new music queen taylor swift announced her re-recording of speak now this weekend and i am so excited I, oh my gosh the vinyl the photo, the album is so gorgeous. I immediately pre-ordered and I probably preemptively did that because I know she's probably going to release a signed version and I should hop on that instead, but I couldn't help it. I'm so excited. I'd like to take this moment to publicly apologize to all the Swifties for ranking Speak Now as my least favorite album. I don't know her. That's not me. I'm a new person. Speak now forever. And that's all I have to say. In other royal news, the coronation of King Charles III happened over the weekend. And uh, there is so much royal drama. <laughs> and I don't really follow the royals much at all. However, it's getting interesting with the exit of Harry and Meghan and this coronation. It's just, there's a lot to get into and we're going to go over a little bit today. Coronation of King Charles III and Queen Consort Camilla took place. So Camilla is not a queen. She is a queen consort, which is simply a queen that is married to the current reigning king so she's just married to the king she does not have any legal say she is just the spouse of the acting king versus um somebody that was born into the lineage and then became queen um but what i think is interesting is that the coronation they decided to have her go by queen camilla so that leads people to believe that she might be referred to as simply Queen Camilla from here on out, which is kind of odd. And something interesting as well is she opted to wear Queen Mary's crown um, in the interests of sustainability and efficiency, according to the royals. So will she be known as Queen Camilla? It's kind of interesting to see Queen Camilla be the queen after the whole Princess Diana tragedy. And if you don't follow the royals, which I did not, but the whole Princess Diana thing is very fascinating. So Princess Diana was married to King Charles and she is the mother of both Harry and William. So she very publicly divorced Prince Charles in 1996 after it came out. He was having an affair with Camilla, who was also married at the time. And then tragically, a year later, passed away while she was in a car. She was in a car accident running away from paparazzi who were chasing her, which is really horrific. And everyone... The whole world was sad about this. People loved Princess Diana. She was described as the queen of people's hearts. So it's just seeing Camilla crowned queen is just a weird and sour subject for a lot of people. So the coronation was a very large event and there was a lot of controversy that was going on around that because right now the UK is going through a crisis. A lot of people are not able to make ends meet. A lot of people are going hungry and here we are having this large event to commemorate the new king and his queen and it's estimated that the cost of this event was around 50 to 100 
million pounds, which is an insane amount of money. (laughs) And I also wanted to note, so after the actual coronation ceremony, they had this concert, which is pretty funny considering it's a royal dignified event and I think it's weird because even in the United States they have (laughs) like when they have new presidential elections they have these pop singers at the events which I find kind of funny personally but this is the same concept they had this large concert afterwards and a number of British performers turned down to be the headliner at this concert so among those are Sir Elton John, the Spice Girls, Harry Styles, Ed Sheeran, and Adele all turned down to sing at this coronation. And oddly enough, the headliner was Katy Perry, who is not even British. Uh, Super random. People are wondering why. And I have no idea. So the coronation in itself was a hot topic because since it's a state state event, it's paid for by the government. And... It's just not a good look right now having people not being able to make ends meet and then having this large event that is going to be paid for by the public. Another hot topic, of course, was Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Will they attend the coronation? And I think as you all know now, Meghan Markle did not attend the coronation. Prince Harry did out of obligation I suppose but they very publicly stepped back from the royal family in 2020 we have all heard about that and so Prince Harry did go however he was sat in the third row behind all of the royal family and allegedly him and Prince William did not speak at all which I can't really say I'm surprised because Harry just came out with his explosive book that basically dragged the royal family through the mud, aired out all their dirty laundry. So there's definitely a rift going on there, which is very interesting to say the least. Personally, I tried to watch a little bit of the Meghan Markle and Prince Harry Netflix special. I could not get into it. It was just not interesting for me. I was surprised at how unlikable they came across in the special which I'm sure is the exact opposite of the image that they wanted to perceive. Megan was talking about their first date after she attended Wimbledon and she was all done up all dressed up had her makeup done and she thought to herself I have to wash all this off because I look nothing like myself and I just thought that was so ridiculous and unrelatable and the fact that they refer to each other as M and H is kind of gives me the ick. (laughs) Um, She also has this podcast called Archetypes and it sounds like it's completely scripted, completely narrated. So they are just so far removed and they want to come off as very relatable and likable. Probably won't be reading Harry's book either. Um, I find the whole grand scheme of it fascinating but and surprisingly Meghan Markle and Harry, I was going to say Harry Styles, <laughs> Prince Harry, were not the most um, scandal of this coronation. Apparently, there is a woman named Rose Hanbury, and she's rumored to be Prince William's mistress and Kate Middleton's ex-best friend. Apparently has some sort of elite background because she was there and she is also married Um, She has a son and apparently the son was in the ceremony and it really stirred the rumor mill for the tabloids. So that kind of took a little bit of the spotlight away from Meghan and Harry. But overall, the whole thing was so over the top. What do you think? Did you watch it? Personally, I didn't, but I saw the Internet just so many articles about all of these items and I just think it's so fascinating as a whole. I don't really follow the royal drama on the day to day but it definitely is very interesting as an outsider to 
read up on what do you think about it are you a fan do you follow the royal family and the royalty with that it is dark out my phone is dying my laptop's dying everything's dying so we're gonna have to wrap it up here it's gonna be it for this episode of a little bit unglamorous thank you so much for being here with me we even are in the dark so we didn't quite make it before the sun went down but that's okay we made it through and i thought it was a pretty good episode next week's podcast will be the week of my birthday oh my gosh so the podcast will come out a day before my birthday so that'll be a big week for me i'm really excited i cannot believe it's coming up so quick you guys oh my goodness as always thank you so much for being here and i will see you in next week's episode bye guys Oh, 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 oh,